Well, hey, it is Saturday, April 16th, day 39 of 40 days of prayer, uh, today and tomorrow, and we've made it through. Uh, we're on page 55, and the topic today is strengthen what remains. Uh, I want to read what Jesus says to the church, Revelation chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, and what we find is a letter to the church of Sardis. And so, uh, Jesus says this, To the angel of the church in Sardis write, The words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works. You have the reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die, for I have not found your works complete in the sight of my God. Remember, then, what you have received and heard. Keep it and repent. If you will not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what hour I will come against you. Yet you have still a few names in Sardis, people who have not soiled their garments, and they will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. The one who conquers will be clothed thus in white garments, and I will never blot his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels." He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. As we consider uh, praying here, um, what, what Jesus is challenging the church to do is to look at the essentials, uh, to look at the works the church is called to do. Now, when we consider works, uh, when we consider deeds, many times our, our minds go helpfully and correctly to Ephesians chapter 2 that says we're not saved by our works, instead we're saved by grace. Uh, it's, it's the gift of God, not from our good deeds, not from our works, so that no one can boast, because God saves us by his grace, right? But Ephesians 2.10 says that God prepared works beforehand for us, good works, that may, we may walk in them and we're his workmanship which means that there are works that don't save but that are works which are generated by god's grace right what we have is as a people is we have a righteousness that's given to us by god's grace the righteousness of christ which is perfect and then god produces through his people through his church by his grace by his spirit works of goodness generated by grace, which don't earn us salvation, but instead promote and advance the cause of salvation, advance grace in the world, extend love. And so what, what Jesus challenges the church here to do is to look at what is about to die, what areas in the church are deficient and need attention and help. Uh, is it encouragement and fellowship? Is it evangelism? Is it discipleship? Is it, uh, and, and w what area do you find a burden and a concern for? Years and years ago, sitting on the couch in my mentor's office, he said, Keith, what's wrong with the church? And I said, I don't think that people take the faith seriously because what they've been presented with is a, a, a bunch of recycled truths and platitudes and they don't hear the scriptures with intensity they don't they don't hear it with intensity it doesn't capture them it doesn't capture the young and so people depart from the faith because they've been presented with a gospel with a message that doesn't challenge and mike said to me go and fix it and that's the challenge Strengthen what remains and is about to die. What is it in the church that you feel called, compelled to address because you notice it and you see it? Jesus says this, the one who conquers will be clothed in white garments. Uh, the one who overcomes, come against the obstacle, come against the difficulty, bring all that you've got to bear against it by God's grace, not to earn your salvation, but because of it. Well, I hope this is an encouragement to you to pray. Uh, thank you so much for coming on this journey with me. I appreciate you. I um, uh, hope you have a great day. God bless you.